Now moving on to the second story. The second story of the lost spring is talking about small boy Mukesh who works in a bangle making industry or a bangle making factory. And we know that bangle making is very hazardous. So even if we are talking about adults working there, the conditions of work is not good. It's not safe because they have you need to work uh, in for the in the near the blast furnaces. The temperature is very high. The glass is there, which itself is uh, you know uh, very uh, we could say a thing which if not handled with care can lead to problems, can cause uh, health uh, issues, right? Can hurt the people who are working there. Along with that, there is a lot of darkness, there are chemicals that are used. So when we are saying that this is not even safe for the adult, imagine children working in such industries. What kind of uh, you know impact it could have on their health, right? So let's have a narration of this story about Mukesh who is belonging from a bangle making industry. Let's start. I want to drive a car. Mukesh insists on being his own master. I will be a motor mechanic, he announces. So I already told you that the main character of the story is a boy, a small boy, Mukesh. And he, the plot of the story is based in Firozabad, which is very famous for the bangle making industry that is there. And Mukesh also belongs to that family where from his uh, the people belonging in his family from generations have been working in this industry. However, what how does the story start that he insists that is he just wants to be his own master and what does he want to become? I want to become a motor mechanic. Do you know anything about cars? I ask. So when the author, uh, the author met this boy Mukesh, so Mukesh told the author that I want to become a motor mechanic. Then the author questioned him that fine, but do you know anything about cars? You want to become a motor mechanic. So are you aware about cars? So I will learn to drive a car. He answers, looking straight into my eyes. His dream looks like a mirage amidst the dust of streets that fill his town. Firozabad, famous for its bangles. Every other family in Firozabad is engaged in making bangles. It is the center of India's glass blowing industry where families have spent generations working around the furnaces, welding glass, making bangles for the women in the land, it seems. So, this story is based in Firozabad, which is famous for its bangle making industry. Maximum families who are residing here are involved in making the bangles, working around the furnaces, molding the glass into bangles, into different colors. And you know, in fact, every fam other family here, they, the generations have been involved in this bangle making industry. But here the author happens to meet a young boy, Mukesh, who says that I want to become a motor mechanic. And then when the author questions him that, okay, you want to become a motor mechanic, but do you know anything about cars? So he says that, yes, and I will also learn how to drive. But what does the author say? The author thinks that, you know, even if he's saying that he wants to learn to drive a car with, with so much hope and so much shine in his eyes, he's saying this, but for the author, it seems that his dream of learning to drive a car or of becoming a motor mechanic seems to be like a mirage, means something which is too good to be true. It seems to give a false impression, but it is actually not there. Amidst the dust of streets, that is in that bangle making industry, which is actually surrounded the families inherently from generations. So it seems uh, his dream of becoming a motor mechanic just seems to be just a very uh, a picture, a thing that is too real to believe, something that is too real to happen. In that, in the middle, amidst this, in the middle of that condition of Firozabad. So Miraj is too good to be real. Like something that give, may give you an impression that it is realistic, but it does not happen to in reality. So, 
Mukesh's family is among them. None of them know that it is illegal for children like him to work in the glass furnaces with high temperatures in dingy cells without air and light that the law, if enforced, could get him and all those 20,000 children out of the hot furnaces where they slog their daylight hours, often losing the brightness of their eyes. So, the people, like I told you, their maximum families here from generations, right from the elders to the adults to the little children, are also involved in this bangle making from generations. But all of them, like many of them here, are completely unaware that this condition in which the children are working is so unsafe, is so unhygienic. In fact, if there is a law, there is in fact, uh, uh, there is a law which if passed, if it is enforced, then what would happen? Then it would make sure that all those 20,000 children, imagine 20,000 children who are now involved uh, in this bangle making industry would be taken away would be allowed uh, would be told to stop working there why because the conditions are bad unhygienic it is too dark the there is a uh, high temperature the glass is being used and all these children what are they doing they are working in dim that is a place which is where it is not even properly lit where it is not even proper air and light is not there and all these children they are busy making those bangles near these high temperatures chemicals, glass, blast furnaces, the temperature being so high and so much pressure is putting, uh, they, they put on their eyes. So, they in the daylight when they are working in such dark conditions, the they are losing their eyesight. So, uh, it is being said by the author that, you know, if the family of Mukesh and many others got to know that such a law gets passed, then these children, it would be illegal for these children to go and work in such conditions. Mukesh's eyes beam as he volunteers to take me to home, which he proudly says is being rebuilt. We walk down stinking lanes choked with garbage, past homes that remain hovels with climb, uh, crumbling walls, wobbly doors, no windows, crowded with families of humans and animals coexisting in a primeval state. He stops at the door of one such house, bangs a woobly iron door with his foot and pushes it open. So what has happened? That Mukesh, while he was talking to the author, he says, he proudly, you know, offers the author that uh, he would take him to his, uh, he would take her to his home. So, okay, so he just volunteers, like steps first or takes initiative. So this boy volunteers, comes first, takes initiative and offers the author that yes, he is happy and he is hopeful that the author will accompany him to his house. And the boy also tells him that his house is getting rebuilt. So the author now agrees to it. So he started taking her to his house. But what follows is that those stinking lanes, stinking is bad smell. So there was a very bad smell through the lanes where they were moving and the those lanes why there was a bad smell because the lanes were just filled with the garbage and then they travel uh, they crossed a number of houses which were not properly built most of the houses were not having windows some of the walls were half built or seems that the you know it might crumble it might fall down anytime and uh, the doors were not proper they were woobly, that is, they, they were not pro properly made and, you know, there were uh, small houses which were occupied by large number of families and even animals were there. So, when uh, the author was just uh, looking at all this and at one point, Mukesh stopped at one such house and he just banged uh, through his hand and his, uh, you know, that iron door of his house, which was again not proper. And with his leg, he pushed open the door of his house. We enter a half-built shack. In one part of it, thatched with dead grass, is a firewood stove over which 
sits a large vessel of sizzling spinach leaves so when he opens the door the author and the boy that is mukesh they enter his house and the house is what a half built shack so basically a hut basically it is a hut which is improperly built right and when they enter they see that the uh, one part of that is thatched with dead grass why i am saying that this hut is half built because one part of the roof is thatched means there is dead grass on it covered with dead grass right one part of the roof is covered with dead grass uh, and then they enter further and she notices that there is a firewood uh, there is a firewood stove and over it was kept a very big vessel a very big uh, container on which the spinach leaves were sizzling on the ground in large aluminium platters platters is aluminium plates are more chopped vegetables so more vegetables are being chopped and kept on those aluminium platters or aluminium plates a frail young woman is cooking the evening meal for the whole family a frail means a very weak so there is a very weak women a very weak young woman who was sitting there and she was making the food or preparing the dinner for the entire family and then through eyes filled with smoke she smiles she is the wife of mukesh's elder brother not much older in years she has begun he she has begun to command respect as the bahu the daughter in law of the house already in charge of three men her husband mukesh and their father so when the author enters the house she first describes the condition of the house that the door was wobbly it was not properly built the house was you know uh, kind of half built with uh, the roof being incomplete there was just one part of the roof that was covered with that dead grass and then when they enter further they witness that okay uh, there were uh, there was a young women who was there was a young uh, girl who was sitting there and she seemed to be very weak her eyes was seemed to be filled with smoke now here by smoke it means because she was cooking that in that firewood the evening dinner and probably there was a lot of smoke that was coming out of it which actually seemed to be there in her eyes so therefore it is being said that her eyes were filled with smoke that was coming out of the container while cooking food and she is a very young girl and she was mukesh's elder brother's wife and she was uh, commanding the respect in such a small age as the bahu as the daughter in law of that house who is responsible for cooking and maintaining the family taking care of the family and she is cooking here the food the dinner for uh, the entire family when the older man enters she gently withdraws behind the broken wall and brings her veil closer to her face so the moment the elder man that is mukesh uh, that is her husband and uh, their father mukesh and her husband's father came in so she kind of stood up and she you know walked behind the broken wall right and she was probably uh, covering her head uh, with a sari and she just draws that veil to cover her face so it is basically a part of tradition in many places we find that women covering her hair uh, covering her head and probably drawing covering their face also in front of her elders so as custom demands like just i told you it's part of the tradition or custom that they tend to keep their face covered with a veil so as custom demands daughter in laws must veil their faces means cover cover their faces before male elders in this case the elder is an impoverished bangle maker impoverished means he is a very poor very poor very weak very poor and very weak old man who was a bangle maker despite long years of hard labor first as a tailor then as a bangle maker he has failed to renovate his house 
send his two sons to school so this man who is now impoverished he seems very weak is very poor has actually worked really hard in his life he was earlier a tailor then he became bangle maker but is despite of working so hard all his life he was unable to renovate means unable to rebuild or repair his house or even sent to his two kids his two sons to school for getting educated all he has managed to do is teach them what he knows that is the art of making bangles it is his karam his destiny says mukesh's grandmother who has watched her own husband go blind with the dust from the polishing the glass of bangles can a god given lineage ever be broken she implies so at the same time there was a old lady who was the grandmother of mukesh and his brother she uh, came and she started saying that you know uh, it is his karam it is his destiny it is his fate that he's worked so hard and he's unable to do this uh, for his family he's unable to you know give education to his children he's unable to uh, rebuild his house because this is like a god given lineage that is a cycle a bhagwan nahi hame us tarah ki cheez di hai ki generation after generation everyone is getting involved into the same thing and she uh, remembers it how she is also seen her husband going blind why because again repeatedly i have told you the working conditions in the bangle making in, uh, industry the bangle making factory is very hazardous and with those dim light blast furnaces high temperature dust bangles so you know the the glass of the bangles so his husband has actually gone blind has lost his eyesight working all his life in the bangle making industry so she just says that you know uh, this condition of our family from generations being involved in this uh, bangle making industry will it ever get broken will our fate ever change will our destiny ever change right so karam is here the fate fine so born in the caste of bangle makers they have been nothing so they have seen nothing but bangles in the house in the yard in every other house every other yard every street in ferozabad plus it's not just only mukesh uh, mukesh's family who's involved into bangle making but the entire ferozabad is actually into bangle making so uh, you know it's like everywhere every other house and even the yard that is the open area outside the house is just filled with different bangles different colors bangles so so spirals of bangles that is the, there is a cluster of bangles all there in different colors sunny gold paddy green royal blue pink purple every color that is born out of the seven colors of the rainbow so here the seven colors of the rainbow are actually depicted or compared with the seven colors or probably more colors that we can draw out of the seven colors of rainbow which are there in the bangles that are made in ferozabad they lie in the mounds in unkempt yards are piled on the four wheeled uh, hand carts pushed by young men along the narrow lanes of the shanty town so here in this town everyone is having these bangles in different colors be it their houses the yards that is the open area of their uh, houses open area outside houses right these are yards at the back here at the back or in the front wherever their open areas are everywhere the bangles are there and people are carrying it in the hand cart which they are moving in the shanty town in the shanty uh, town that is in the street in the streets of this small town of ferozabad and in dark hunt mends next to lines of flames of flickering oil lamps sit boys and girls with their fathers and mothers wielding pieces of colored glass into circles of bangles their eyes are more adjusted to the dark than to the light outside that is why they often end up losing their eyesight before they uh, before they grow old so what happens that in those uh, you know town uh, in those uh, streets probably in the darker areas the families young boys girls along with their 
fathers and mothers what are they find it doing they are carrying an oil lint lamps for doing their job and their job is welding molding the pieces of uh, colored glass and maybe they are working so much darkness or from in the entire day that these people are more used to the darkness than to the outside bright light and therefore they tend to lose this because there is so much pressure uh, on their eyesight in making these bangles the conditions being so bad therefore most of them tend to lose their eyesight you know at a very early age savita a young girl in a drab pink dress sits alongside an elderly woman soldering pieces of glass so uh, the author is talking about a girl called savita who is a young girl and she says that she, that she is sitting in a very beautiful pink color dress and she is sitting next to an elderly woman that is an uh, elder woman and she is what what she is doing soldering the pieces of glass means she is joining the pieces of she is joining the pieces of glass as her hands move mechanically like the tongs of a machine i wonder if she knows the sanctity of the bangles she helps to make so you know she is so used to in making that bangle probably she uh, has acquired that skill that it seems that her, uh, it's, that it looks as if her hands are the mechanical tongs that she is making those bangles and the author you know just looking at her things that does she realize that these bangles that that she is making what is the sacredness behind the bangles it is considered so auspicious such a positive thing for the indian women so sanctity is sacredness so the author thinks again i'm telling the author thinks that this young girl who is making these bangles so efficiently does she realize that these bangles have a sacred thing attached to it with a sacredness that these bangles carry for the married indian women right so it symbolizes an indian women's suhag auspiciousness in marriage so important considered so auspicious so positive for an indian women after marriage it will dawn on her suddenly one day when her head is draped with a red veil her hands dyed red with heena and red bangles rolled onto her wrist so now the author says that probably if, even if she does not realizes it now it will dawn on her that is she will realize it one day when she herself will become a bride she will be having mehndi on her hand her uh, face would be covered with a red veil and uh, she would be wearing the red bangles herself and that is the day she would realize the auspiciousness the sacredness behind the bangles that she has been making since a young child she is she since she was small so she will then become a bride like the old women beside her who became one many years ago so now she's talking about that elderly women who's sitting next to savita that maybe this young this uh, women elderly women had also become one uh, become a bride one day and she realized the importance of the bangles so similarly savita would also one day realize the sacredness behind the bangles that she's been making the day she becomes a bride herself so she still has bangles on her wrist but no light in her eyes so here we are talking about that elderly women who were sitting next to savita we are talking about the her that you know that yes she being being married she is still wearing those bangles but the light the hope the shine the happiness in the eyes of that old woman is no longer there ek waqt sher bhar khana bhi nahi khaya she says in a voice drained of joy so sher is what a quantity uh, basically a unit to measure a quantity right sher is unit to measure quantity so this elderly woman is saying ki ek waqt ka proper khana bhi hum pet bhar ke nahi kha, kha pate kai baar but we are working so hard making bangles since morning uh, and in such conditions we are putting so much hard work and we've been doing this from generations from so many years still 
वी आर नॉट एबल टू हैव प्रॉपर मील अ प्रॉपर मील ऑन सिंगल डे मेनी अर टाइम्स एंड ऑल दिस वेन शी वॉज सेंग हर वॉइस इज ड्रेन्ड आउट ऑफ जॉय विच मीन्स शी इज कम्प्लीटली यू नो ब्लंट इन द फैक्ट शी इज नॉट हैविंग एनी जॉय शी इज नॉट हैप्पी अबाउट इट शी इज नॉट होपफुल ना सो शी हैज नॉट इंजॉयड इवन वन फुल मील इन हर इंटायर लाइफ टाइम दैट्स वॉट शी हैज रीप्ड her husband an old man with a flowing beard says i know nothing except bangles all i have done is make a house for the family to live in so for them what have they done the f- husband of this elderly man says that yes you may not have uh, enjoyed uh, you, know, you may not have enjoyed one proper meal even on a single day but with this much hard work that we are doing with this much uh, you know uh, effort that we've put in from so many years all that we could have done uh, all that we know is bangles and all that i could say that we have achieved in life which is like a dream was we have built a house and for them making a house was obviously for in conditions that they live in where they're not able to have proper food imagine this old lady saying that in my entire lifetime there's not have there, there there is not even a single day where i had one meal properly right but yes what have they achieved by making mango by making the bangles and investing so much of their time and energy and hard work is they were able to make their own house hearing him one wonders if he has achieved what many have failed in their lifetime he has a roof over his head the cry of not having money to do anything except carry on the business of making bangles not even enough to eat rings in every home the young men echo the lament of their elders little has moved with time it seems in ferozabad years of mind numbing toil have killed all initiative and the ability to dream so the author here is saying that maybe the poor woman is saying that she has not enjoyed a proper meal even on a single day but the husband says but still we have a house so when he says this the author realizes that probably uh, building a house for uh, that, that this uh, man is saying that they have achieved something and that achievement was having their own roof that is having a own house so probably this is a condition of most of the families there where they probably have a house and they do not get to eat and many p families their condition is even more worse where forget about having proper food they are not even having a proper roof that is they are not even having a house of their own so what is happening in ferozabad is that this bangle making is becoming a family uh, kind of uh, occupation which has been passed on from one generation to one other and when it is being passed on to the younger generation all that they repeat echo is all that they repeat is the complaint the lament is the complaint or complaints of their elders that yes some would say that we were able to build a house but we have not enjoyed food we do not have enough to eat we do not have enough to enough money to do something else yes and for some the conditions being even more worse where they would say that neither do they have their own house nor do they have proper food every day right so for them years of mind numbing toil years of such hard work you know a physical work physical hard work killed their initiative and the ability to dream so even if the younger generation want to achieve something else they want to uh, you know dream of becoming something but this uh, years of you know hard work that the elders have given in and the conditions that they are living in does have actually killed this dreams of the younger generation as well why not organize yourselves into a cooperative i ask a group of young men who have fallen into the vicious circle of middlemen who trapped their fathers and forefathers so now the author is questioning a group of uh, you know young men and she's asking that why don't you organize yourself into a cooperative that is why don't you uh, 
act as a group make a small setup and you work as a group because in this way uh, the middlemen maybe the money lenders uh, who have trapped their fathers and forefathers right and the, their fathers and forefathers that is their elder generations have actually fallen into the trap which is the vicious circle of the middlemen the author is questioning the young generation that you know it is better that uh, like why aren't you organizing yourself into the group into some group and work rather than getting trapped into this vicious cycle vicious is the cruel cycle where uh, the condition that has happened with their older generation where some middleman or money lender probably would have given them some money and uh, the these older generations probably thought that yes they would work harder and harder earn more and repay the money but then that thing never happened they were never able to repay the money the interest just went on and this condition of the family the fathers and forefathers just became worse day after day so this cycle becomes very cruel and vicious it's never ending the conditions of these family is like a vicious circle a circle is anyways never ending so the cruel cycle uh, in which they are trapped so the author is saying that why don't you come out of that do not get trapped into uh, such things by another set of middlemen why don't you form a group a setup a cooperative where you can work together so even if we get organized we are the ones who will be hauled up by the police beaten and dragged to jail for doing something illegal they say so now the author uh, when she questions them about this so the young man says that you know even if we think of organizing ourselves and doing something it is us who the police is going to take away put them in put us in jail uh, uh, for say for say and tell us that we are doing something illegal so hauled up means dragged the that police will drag them take them and lock them into jail for doing something illegal there is no leader amongst them no one who could help them see things differently their fathers are as tired as they are they talk endlessly in spiral that moves from poverty to apathy to greed and to injustice so now the author is saying that another problem here is that there is no leader among them there is no one who wants to take the charge and tell them that yes things could happen in a different way in fact their elders who themselves have suffered do not want to motivate or you know encourage the younger generation to do something else yes to take up charge in fact they are all are too uh, stuck in this cycle in this never ending cycle and this cycle is from poverty they move to apathy to uh, to greed and from greed it moves to injustice so he's saying that this is the cycle first it's poverty that the condition is very very poor and from that poor conditions arise a situation of apathy which means there is lack of concern here of basic things of life so apathy is lack of concern for basic things of life hey right in basic cheezon ko pehle to poverty hai conditions hi bahut zyada poor hai so very poor conditions that is the beginning then with the very poor conditions there is lack of the concern should should be there even if not for themselves for the children concern hi nahi hai about the basic the essential things for life and when that is there the becomes a situ- next situation is greedy they themselves naturally become very greedy and very selfish so they naturally become selfish and greedy because of lack of uh life like lack of life in the sense because of lack of money lack of resources because of their poor living conditions and then eventually it leads to injustice many of them getting indulged into some sort of crime some sort of uh, illegal activities so this is like a never ending cycle where most of these families gets trapped so 
so this is what they are talking about that everyone here be it the elder generation or the younger generation they are continuously talking like a spiral this cycle where it moves from poverty to apathy to greed to injustice and again back to poverty listening to them i see two distant worlds one of the family which is caught in a web of poverty burdened by the stigma of caste in which they are born and the other is a vicious circle of the sahukars the middlemen the policemen the keepers of law the bureaucrats and the politicians so looking at them and listening to these conditions the author realizes that this poverty condition or the condition in which these people live is because of two reasons one that some people are inherently born into this poverty into very poor families they are born and then they are burdened by the stigma you know the dogma that yes a particular caste is assigned to do this particular job only so they are and because they are born into a family of bangle makers so they will also become bangle makers only this is the only occupation that they would do so one is that condition you know because of which the people are living into such conditions and the other one is because there is a vicious there is a cruel cycle of an outside influence where we say there are sahukars there are money lenders who you know who the police men the bureaucrats and what do they do they kind of you know uh, uh, take uh, say that okay give us some extra money we'll provide you this give them some false hopes and uh, or probably like we said uh, they would give them some money saying that okay if you return it in so and so time you will be in a better condition but even they real know that they are just kind of uh, being unfair to them the condition of these people would never be able to uh, in such a be in such a position that they would be able to repay the money so because of these outside forces that is the vicious cycles of the middlemen the sahukars the policemen the politicians the bureaucrats another set of such families who are stricken into poverty are there together they have imposed the baggage on the child that he cannot put down so because of this generation after generation the younger generation is always having this baggage of poverty you know they are always into this condition before he is aware he accepts it as naturally as his father so every generation because they are born into such conditions they look at things like this which is very natural for them to adopt they do not think that okay something else could be a possibility they grow up in that environment in that situation and then it, that entire thing becomes very natural for them to adopt to do anything else would mean to dare and daring is not part of his growing up when i sense a flash of it in mukesh i am cheered i want to be a motor mechanic he repeats so now the author is saying that you know in such places in such families like you know she said earlier also that leadership is not there there is no one to guide them show them things differently there is no one who takes charge of thing and therefore these people don't really dream about something right they do not dare to do something else but here when she uh, was talking to mukesh and the way mukesh was saying that he wants to become a motor mechanic with so much hope in his eyes so the author was very happy to see that and then uh, uh, while she was thinking about all this uh, mukesh again repeats that he wants to become a motor mechanic and that he will go to a garage and even learn how to drive a car but the garage is a long way from his home she uh, and then he says but the author says but the garage that you're talking about is very far off from your place so mukesh says that i will walk do you also dream of flying a plane he is suddenly silent no he says staring at the ground so now the author just questions him that okay good that you want to become a motor mechanic you want to learn how to drive but do you even want to fly a plane but the moment this question is put up by the author mukesh just very you know uh, uh, grimly like very softly he just says no and he just starts looking at the ground so in his small murmur because he did not even say properly or loudly that no he just very meekly very weakly in a very small uh, no voice he just said no 
and there is an embarrassment that has not yet turned into regret he is content to dream of cars that he sees hurtling down the streets and uh, over the and not about the planes that hover over ferozabad so now this is a situation of embarrassment why because a child is aware about about what the child is aware about cars that he sees on the streets on the road so he has seen the cars and therefore he dreams to be a motor mechanic he dreams to learn he, and he wants to learn how to drive a car but probably he is embarrassed and he is still not regretting that is only in the stage of embarrassment why because probably he is never uh, seen a aeroplane is never seen a flight moving uh, uh, you know above the streets of ferozabad and that is why here when the author questions him that okay do you even want to fly a plane so he just very you know in a very embarrassed manner he says no because probably he's never seen a aeroplane right so here comes the end to the second story also where again we see that how you know the condition of mukesh also is about a deprived childhood a childhood which obviously this child is dreaming he wants to do something else but then the condition of his family the condition that he is in not getting education and the place that he lives in there are too many things that are there that probably is taking that that probably is taken away his innocence and the childhood he is being deprived of that so if we compare both the situations both the stories of mukesh and of sahib definitely they are different in the sense that they are living in different parts of the country they are into different occupations but inherently what is common is that their innocence the love the nurturing that they should be given the freedom that they should be given to learn educate and dream is taken away from them they are into this exploitative nature because of their poverty stricken conditions right and therefore we name this as the lost spring now like them there are various stories maybe we also know of people you know we also see many people many young boys and girls uh, you know uh, around us and we can also see child labor happening right and people getting involved not getting educated and too many thing so there are too many stories like mukesh and that of sai so now that we have done the narration of both the stories let's start with the summary followed by the question answers first the ncert question answers and then the cbse 